So in this video, we'll take a look at freshwater use. Which of these two countries do you think have the least freshwater resources? Pause the video, think about it, come back. All right, let's take a look. So it is Northern Africa and the Middle East, as we can see from this graph. And um, the Middle East has a lot of money because of all the oil. And uh, so they can afford, in most cases, to do desalination using seawater and the process of reverse osmosis to create fresh water. We can see here that the U.S. is using more water per capita than any of these other countries, and twice as much per capita as the U.K. So what is the biggest consumptive use of water in developed countries? So if you said C, agriculture, you're correct. Agriculture is in red. You might be wondering, well, what's the blue? Blue is thermoelectric cooling. It's pulling water in from a river or ocean to cool an electric power plant as part of the electric power um, generation process. So we use water 30% for agriculture, 10% for domestic use, meaning household, 10% for industrial, like in factories, and the other 50% is considered non-consumptive use because you're removing the water only temporary, and this is for the thermoelectric power plant cooling. So agriculture is the biggest overall use of water in terms of um, making, consuming the water where you're discharging it in a less usable or non-usable form. All right, so here we see major irrigation going on in Kansas where it rains very little. So where are they getting their water from? It's called the Ogallala Aquifer. For the most part, that's where they get it from. And it's huge. It's covering all of these states. And this is very old water mostly from the last ice age 10,000 years ago. We're seeing from this color that many areas of this aquifer are experiencing significant drops in the water table. The red, like right here in the middle, is indicating more than 40 feet drop from the period of 1980 to 1995. And groundwater is a big deal, as we've been learning from our guest speakers. You know, worldwide, one in three humans rely on groundwater for drinking and 99% of the rural U.S. relies on groundwater for drinking. That's true for my household because I'm beyond the city limits where, or the county, I'm beyond the limits of the water pipes that the city or county uses to distribute water. So let's see here. When we take water out of the ground, we can sometimes um, cause subsidence to help happen. And this is when the ground is lowering so you can see the sign. This is where the ground is right here. Ground used to be at this level. Now, it's, don't be confused about this. This is above height above sea level. So what we mean is that um, the sign has been moving with the land. But in the past, if you were to go back to 1925, the man would have been standing up here. But the ground has just become compacted and everything moving down with it. Although sometimes we do see effects on the surface of subsidence. And here we see some kind of buckling of the sidewalks and whatnot. And Mexico City is experiencing a big deal with subsidence. And in some cases, you get sinkholes, where the underground part can no longer support whatever's above it, and the, lot, the ground kind of falls in. This happened in Florida. In places where you are pulling water out of the ground, you get what's called the cone of depression. And um, in this case, the water table becomes lower right around the point of extraction. When that occurs near coastal lines, you can sometimes run the risk of saltwater intrusion, where the saltwater can now be coming in and get into your aquifer. And that's really unfortunate because saltwater is, is not very useful, you can't drink it, and you basically usually have to drill a new well or desalinate the water. Okay, I'd like you to tune into part two on irrigation.